A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> the Civil War, government troops were sent to the western United States to put down the rebellion of the Indian tribes who refused to live up to their treaties. The commanding officers of the army had very little experience in fighting Indians. Their knowledge of the country was poor, and their work might never have been accomplished if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. It was his daring and resourcefulness which broke the power of the renegades and brought peace and security to the white settlers on the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Black Fox is on the warpath! We've got to hurry! Hey, Silver! Away! cavalry troop led by Captain Fletcher had halted just short of a pass leading into the rugged Sawtooth Hills. The men had dismounted, set up the three field pieces they'd brought with them, and now were firing steadily at the pass whose rocky formation made a natural fortress. Those not occupied with the cannon kept up a deadly barrage of rifle fire. In the midst of this activity, Private Tom Cole approached his commanding officer. Begging your pardon, sir. Yes? Of course, I know it ain't for the likes of me to be asking questions. Quickly, man, get on with it. I, I was just wondering, sir, if you're real sure there ain't no danger that we'll hit the women folks with them redskins. Get back to your post. Yes, sir. I didn't mean no offense, sir. I just asked because, well, hang it all, one of them women is my wife. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Isn't your name Tom Cole? It is, sir. Well, Tom, you needn't worry. Scouts have reported that Black Fox has sent the women ahead. Those Indians in the pass are just fighting a delaying action. Oh, thank you, sir. And Tom. Sir. Maybe you didn't know it. But they have my wife also. Oh, gosh, sir. I'm sorry to hear that. We'll make them pay. We will that, sir. Was there anything else? No, sir. That was all. You better get back there with the men. No, wait. Yes, sir. Deliver a message to Lieutenant Dave. Tell him I said the cannon shot is falling short. Tell him to try for more elevation. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Orderly. Yes, sir. I see one of our scouts over there. Tell him I said we have to have more information. I want to know exactly what those Redskins are up to. I'll speak to him, sir. Now, who's this? Uh, looks like a civilian, sir. A civilian? Very well, I gave you an order. Get down with it. Yes, sir. Whoa, whoa, boy. Whoa there, whoa. Huh. Uh, say, you Captain Fletcher? I am. Got a soldier in your troop named Tom Cole? Just a moment. Who are you? I'm Lem Todd. That's who I am. What are you doing here at a time like this? I've got business with that cold fellow. What business? Sorry, Captain, but it's personal. You'll have to take it up with him another time. No such thing. I spent six months looking for that hombre and covered plenty of miles. And I don't aim to put off seeing him. Don't you realize what's going on here? Like ninjas, ain't you? Yes. I'll have no civilian underfoot. 
I'll have to clear out. I won't. I'm going to see Tom Cole. Get out. Now look here, Captain. If you're figuring I don't know how to handle myself in a fight, you can forget it. I was fighting engines for your ma cut your curls. Fact is, I like to fight engines. Ain't nothing I enjoy more. It'd be like old times to get a chance to drill a couple of them redskins again. I've no time to waste on you. Captain, hold on. Well? If you don't let me have my way, I'm going to make myself a pesky nuisance. But if you'll just pint Tom out, I'll give you my word my business with him won't take about a minute or two. Well, I should have you arrested. <laughs> Bet you don't. But I can't spare a man to watch you. You uh, give me your word you'll take no longer than is absolutely necessary? Uh-huh. You got it. And you'll find coal just beyond that first field piece. Now be quick about it. Yes, sir. Sergeant, make a deal with the left leg. Hi there. Tom Cole. Who is it? Thought I wouldn't find you, didn't you? Lim Tom. You sneaking polecat. Gosh, what are you doing here? Reckon you don't need to be told. Now, wait a minute. Recollect the time I said if you didn't quit quartin' Nelly, I'd drill you? Sure, but don't you ain't see... Ain't forgot, eh? Wait, Mr. Todd, listen. I ain't here to listen. There ain't nothing you can say. You want to get my orders. You persuaded my daughter to do the same. You got her to run away and marry her. Only because she was too cantankerous to give permission. You think I'd give permission to a skunk that just wanted to marry my daughter because someday she'd get my money? To blazes with your cash. I don't care any more about it than Nellie does. She couldn't do you any good now if you did. But look here, Mr. Todd. If the captain should see us talking, I... He'd give permission. But don't you see that and you all can't... all I want from you now is what you've done with Nellie. Where's she at? Huh? Don't you know? Know what? She's one of the women took prisoner. Huh? It's so. The Redskins have got him. By thunder, if you're lying to me, I ain't. I'll... I swear I ain't. Nellie, captured. Mr. Todd, don't you see... How'd that... it happen? Talk up, last year. How'd they get her? Black Fox raided town when most of the soldiers was gone from the fort. I guess he'd been laying for the chance for months. Blasted devil. And now he's taking him into the hills. He's got a hide out there. His whole tribe's along, even the squaws. They're moving bag and baggage. What we're doing now is trying to blast our way into that pasture, see? So as we can follow. That's why we got these cannon along. Tom. Yeah? This has kind of took me all in a heap. Sure, I should think so. I reckon this ain't neither the time nor the place for me to call you to an account. Now wait, Mr. Let Todd. Let me finish. For now, we call it quits. We leave it that way till we know what's to become an L.A. I know that but everything... by thunder, when this is over, I'm going to call you out okay. and then... Tell me you take just a minute, then you clear out. We're just finished, Captain. For now. Then get back out of rifle range. Those Indians are armed. Sure, Captain. Sir. Well? Scout to report, sir. Good. No, it's you, Sam. <laughs> well, what have you found out? Why aren't the Indians replying to our fire? They skipped. What? Sure, Van Moose cleared out, hightailed it. Why didn't I get a report of this before? We just found it out ourselves, Captain. Don't know how they managed it without our seeing them, but they did. Impossible. Our fire's been aimed to cut them off. Well, they fool you. I wanted to capture those braves and hold them as hostages for the women. And now you can't. Yeah, they're heading for their hideout. Sure. What in heaven's name are we going to do? Power them, I reckon. What else? Without our field pieces? You can't take them things over them hill trails. You know we're outnumbered at least ten to one, don't you? Uh-huh. We've got to keep our cannon with us to square the odds. Orderly. Yes, sir. Tell the bugler to blow ceasefire. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain. Well? You will follow after him, won't you, sir? You let him get clean away with our women, will you? I will not. Cannon or no cannon, somehow we'll follow. While Captain Fletcher debated the dilemma created by the Indians' vanguard, two horsemen were racing across the plains. One, a masked man, was mounted on a great white stallion that traveled with the speed of light. The other, an Indian, rode a powerful, deep-chested paint. They urged their mounts toward the crest of a hill, and when they reached it... Look there, the soldiers. Huh? You are still determined to carry out your plan, Tato? You can still change it, you know. Uh, me go. You're putting yourself in danger. Hunter, not afraid. The Black Fox learns you're on our side, that you're friendly to the whites. Him not find out. You've always wanted a chance at Black Fox, haven't you? Ah. Uh, him, enemy, Thundercloud. Thundercloud's been a good friend to us both. Well, Tonto, here's where our trails part. Good luck. Ah. Uh. And if anything goes wrong, you know a smoke signal by day or a fire by night will bring me on the run. Hunter, no. 
And I'm off to see Captain Fletcher. He is hoping he remembers me. Oh, you'll not forget. Adios. Huh? Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Come on, old fellow. I'll silver away. <laughs> Tonto sent Scout galloping toward the hill. The Lone Ranger headed Silver for the soldiers' group below. It was some time later that Lem Todd approached Captain Fletcher's orderly and... Hey, young feller. What do you want? How's for talking to the captain now? You can't. He's still busy. He's still with that masked hombre that rode up? He is. Who was that feller? I've told you before that I don't know. Does the captain? He said he did. What are they palavering about? I don't know. <laughs> Say, don't you know anything? If you come to me looking for a job, doggone, I'd... I wouldn't have you around. Well, how much longer do you think they'll be tied up? I don't know that either. Good gosh, if you don't beat anything I ever heard of. What's the government pay you for? I can't see. What's that? Assembly. A what in... There's something up. Stay out of the way. Company! Boy! Company! Attention! At ease. Men, all of you are acquainted with the situation. Black Fox is making for his hideout. He's taking with him not only my wife, the wife of another member of this company, but four other women as well. It's our duty to free them and punish the Indians who captured them. Now, an hour ago, because of the odds against us, Seemed impossible to do either. What's happened to change things, Captain? This man and I have had a talk. He's masked, but he and I have met before. I'll vouch for him. Yeah? Sam, I'm told by Captain Fletcher, you know these hills thoroughly. Frontwards and backwards, mister. An Indian friend of mine told me Black Fox would make for Snake Ridge. Do you agree with that? Uh Uh-huh. That's just where he's going. Ain't a harder place in the hills to get to. And once you're there, ain't an easier place to defend. There's a kind of bull beneath the ridge, isn't there? Sure. Room in it for the whole tribe. What chance have these men of following Black Fox there and making his people prisoner? Well, I'd say it can't be done. We ain't got the men for it. But if the cannon were taken along... How? By putting wings on them? You got any notion how narrow them hill trails are in places? I think I have. But you haven't answered my question. Well, if you're interested in talking about what can't be... Well, I'll admit the cannon would make a difference. Black fox savvies what they can do. Line them up along the top of the ridge, pointing down on his camp, and he'd bust his neck giving up. Only like I said afore, you won't get no cannon into the hills. Do you think Black Fox would surrender as long as he held the women, knowing that we couldn't fire on his people without firing on the women as well? I was forgetting that. No, maybe he wouldn't. Captain, I believe that proves my point. It does. Say, what do you two fellas got up your sleeves? A masked man has suggested a plan I'm convinced offers us our one chance of success. But it will call for volunteers. For men willing to enter Black Fox's encampment secretly. Knowing that if they're discovered, the troop will be unable to come to their aid. Moreover, their discovery could mean the women's death. Six men will be needed. They must be alert, good men on the trail, willing to take orders from the masked man without question. Well, who volunteer? <laughs> Doggone if every man in the company don't want to go. You've got to let me go, sir. One of them women is my wife. Very well, Tom. You can be one. How about me? His wife is my daughter. I'm sorry. This job is for soldiers only. We'll not waste time over this. Simpson, Lacey, Jones, Crandall, Hanson, step forward. I'm choosing you. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it. I'm sure I won't. How soon must you start? Immediately. Here, Silver. Get to the saddle, man. Oh, Captain. Right. Yes? <laughs> Get the rest of the company to the ridge as soon as possible. We'll carry out our part the night after next. You must have your men in position by the following dawn. We'll be there. Good. Ready, men? Then come on. Hello, Silver! Away! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. While the Lone Ranger and the volunteers raced for the hills and Captain Fletcher followed with his company, Tonto had established contact with old Black Fox himself. Assuming the character of an Indian anxious to make war upon the whites, he had no difficulty in joining the chief's party. The captive women were with them, and their destination, as the horses carried them up the narrow hill trail, was the hideout below Snake Ridge that Black Fox had prepared in advance. Tonto had been with the party for some time, when suddenly one of the women noticed that he was riding toward them. Great. Here comes the Redskins. Oh. Get back. Don't you dash come closer. Napo. Here, pay Ragat. No, down, coyote, Martha, don't. You'll just rile him. Scratch his eyes out if we could lay our hands to him. But Nellie's right, Martha. Don't make him angry. We we don't know what they might do. <laughs> I wish this and Sabe what I was saying. Then I could give him a proper tongue lashing. Me savvy. You be careful. Black fox, him savvy, too. What's that you said? He spoke English. Me friend. Savvy, me help you. You, you are friend? Uh, but what do you want with Black that? fox, him watch. Now you act afraid. Okay, minute ka, hopa. Wakila. Go on now, go on, get the drink. Me talk other time. Ote, hello, rakat. He said it was our friend. Martha, do you suppose oh, it's Grace, a... I give up supposing a long time ago. Maybe he's friendly and maybe he ain't. But I'd rather your man was here with his soldiers than all the friendly engines ever walked. But he really oh, ain't no use talking about it anyhow. Oh, me on an Indian pony. Me that ain't rode a horse for the past five years. Oh. When Black Fox led his captive into the bowl below Snake Ridge, they saw that the Indian squaws had already erected teepees, but others had approached the valley as well. Others whose approach had not been noticed. At dusk on the following day, the Lone Ranger and his companions took shelter behind some boulders that looked down on the Indian encampment. Look at the murdering critters. They're sure whooping it up. Reckon they're celebrating taking prisoners. Yeah. Well, before we're through with them, they'll be singing a plum different tune. Don't show yourselves. Mister, you're in charge and we won't forget it. But every time I stop to think they got Nellie down Don't there, I... Don't think about it. That's easier said than done. Of course it is, but we've got a job to do, and we can't risk failure. You're right. They can't see us, can they? Not here. Tom, hand me that bundle I brought along. It's right behind you. Here you are. What's in it? Wait until I have it unfastened, and I'll show you. There. Well, look. Well, uh, well I'll be hogtied. It, it's women's duds. Dresses. What on earth are they for? To wear them. Huh? There's clothes enough for all of you. You'll put them on. Hey, One no. moment. But we... You wear these, and tonight you take the place of the women Black Fox holds captive. You mean I'll that you I'll explain. Want... I have an Indian friend below there with Black Fox. Tonto? The Indian you've mentioned? Yes. If he's such a part of yours, what's he doing down there? Black Fox has been Tonto's enemy ever since he led a raid against the tribe of Tonto's best friend among the red men, Chief Thundercloud. Oh. Tonto will know where the women are held, how many guards have been appointed to watch them. He may even be able to be chosen a guard himself. And? We decided on this meeting place when he left me. I expect him at any moment. When the village is asleep, we'll go down there. You'll take the place of the women. They'll come back here. I'll put them on your horses and get them started out of the hills. Just a second. Yes? With Tonto down there to get them away, why do we have to take their places? Why can't we all leave to once? Because we freed the women but didn't capture Black Fox, only half our work would be done. Yeah? We finished the job. There must be no cause for suspicion until morning. And in the morning, Captain Fletcher will be on hand. I don't know if that's any comfort or not. No? Well, before we started, I heard you fellas talking. The captain said without the cannon along, Black Fox couldn't be licked. And the rest of you agreed cannon couldn't be brought into the hills. Tom. Well? Can you make out that ridge on the other side of the bull? Uh-huh. What of it? Look at it again in the morning. Huh? You may see something that'll surprise you. But what do you mean? Quiet. Who's coming? It's Tonto. Tonto, over here. Oh. Oh. Tonto, talk fast. You've got to get back before they notice your absence. Uh. First, where are the women? Them in big teepee. This side, big fire. The one I'm pointing at? That's right. How many guards? One front of teepee, one inside. Tonto guard inside. Good work, Kimasabi. That leaves us just one fellow to deal with. Huh? Now, Tonto, listen closely. When the village is asleep, signal us. We'll be waiting. Give the call of a timber wolf. Huh? Tonto, do it. Take care of the outside guard yourself. Huh? All right, go back. Huh? Me? Stranger. Yes? 
I've seen enough of you in the last couple of days to know you ain't planning on leaving with the women. If you ain't staying in the teepee with us, what are you planning to do? I'm calling on Black Fox at dawn. At dawn? You mean uh, alone? Yes. You'll be killed. I think not. But you can't. I'll be alone and unarmed. I've got an idea Black Fox will be too curious to attempt my life at once. And if he waits, it'll be too late. Hours passed before the Indian camp became silent. Hours that seemed as long as days. They're asleep. Why don't Tonto signal? He will when it's time. I'm so doggone stiff from waiting. I don't know if I'm going to be able to move when the signal comes. You'll be all right. You you don't think something's happened to Tonto, do you? Could they have found out, caught him after he talked to us? We can be certain of nothing, but it won't help to worry about it. <laughs> Look at these duds. I'd sure hate to have the boys in the regiment see me dressed up in them. I can't rightly get the hang of the darn things. In the dark, it won't matter. You won't be moving around in the teepee. I don't expect trouble on that score. The big thing is to get you there and the women away. We'll do it. Sure we will. I... Listen. The signal. Well, now for it. Come, follow me. As the Lone Ranger's party crept into Black Fox's slumbering camp, Tonto, inside the teepee where the women were held prisoners, was moving silently toward its entrance. Behind him huddled the women, making no sound. Ahead of him was the blurred shadow of the guard stationed outside. Tonto moved cautiously until he was directly behind the unsuspecting brave. Slowly, he raised an arm high in the air and then... Get him! Is he unconscious? Uh, he, he's not dead, is he? Him wake up by and by. My sakes alive. I'm so trembly, I can't hardly get my breath. Grace, just feel how my hands are shaking. Uh, I know, Martha. I think I'm worse than you. Where are the men? Them come soon. I you don't wait. See. Who there? Tonto. Huh? That's the other guard? Huh? You've taken care of them in good shape. Inside, men, quickly. Nellie. Where are you, Nellie? Tom. Gosh, honey, I'm Enough so glad. That. The worst is still ahead of us. Are all the women here? All of us. My husband Should be we... approaching the ridge right now with his men. You'll see him tomorrow. Oh, thank heaven. You're sure you can play your parts, men? You of betcha. Of we can. Then we'll leave. The women left the camp as silently as the men had entered. The masked men led them to a place where the horses had been secured pointed out the trail that would take them to Snake Ridge and the troopers, then remained behind to wait for the dawn. The Indians awakened early, but before daylight could reveal the trick that had been played upon them, the masked man had leaped to the saddle was urging Silver toward the very center of the encampment. Come on, old fellow! Hurry, boy! Hurry! Black Fox! Come on, Silver! That's him, boy! Saddle! Tell Black Fox I'm not up! So Oh, hold that, Silver. Hold on, hold that, hold. What is there? They call. Him, him say you die. Back, stand back. Out of the ridge. Make Black Fox look at the ridge. Ah. Come on. Come on. Lay low. Come on. Come on. Tonto, what are they saying? Them pray. Good, keep talking. Tell Black Fox those cannon he sees up there on the ridge will open fire the moment I'm attacked. Remind him of what they can do. Tell him his only chance is in surrender. Me tell him. Tell Rock, let ho, form up. Tell Rock, Tenilo, ho pe, ronicte. Pe, Rack, let ho, imkat. Nako, road duck. Mapoku, daluko. Yes? Him say, pale face warrior, not fire. Him say, them fire cannon, them kill pale face squaw. So he thinks his prisoners are still here, huh? Huh? And he's depending upon the soldiers not to fire on women of their own race. Uh. Then we'll show him something. Tom, Lacey, Hanson, come out. Here we are, mister. And tell Black Fox we've still got our guns. Come here. Right. Tell, uh, tell Black Fox he has one last chance. The women are gone. These men are soldiers. If they're killed, it'll be in the line of duty. He can surrender now or never. Hopo. Litula. Kaput manikte maksa. Kedo. Kedo. Lakro. Katila. Ilut. 
Mitoi, so Crowley, my heat go up. How do we won? They're dropping their guns. Oh, that heap good. The threat of the cannon forced them to it, Kimosabe. And look there. Here comes Captain Fletcher. He's seen what happened. This beats me. Yes? I was so doggone sure cannon couldn't be brought into these hills. There weren't. Huh? You can ask your captain about it. He'll explain. Here he is now. Ah. Round up every Indian in this camp. Search them for arms. You know what to do with any that make trouble? Yes, sir. The women, Captain, they reached you safely? Thanks to you, they did. This should be uh, a quiet part of the West from now on, Captain, with Black Fox captured. It will be. I can guarantee that. And you'll get full credit in my report. Sir. Yes? Pardon the question, sir, but the cannon. We understood they'd have to be left behind. We've been wondering if... <laughs> oh, the cannon. Yes, sir. You mean to say you were taken in as Black Fox was? Taken in, sir? Those aren't cannon. They're logs painted and hollowed to represent cannon. Well, oh, can you tie that? I'll bet anything, sir, that was the mass feller's ID, too. You're right, it was. I, Mr. Todd, did you come here with the soldiers? You think I was going to be kept away, young feller? Well, but don't you see that... I'm here to finish that argument we had before. Now, listen, Mr. Todd. There's no use your being mad now because me and Hel Nellie was hitched. We wanted to... Mad? Mad? Who said it was mad? But you know very Shut well... Shut up and let me have my say. You ran away with my daughter. And for that, I figured you to be akin to a skunk. But with the help of the masked man, you brought her back again. So I reckon things are square. Oh, gosh. Tom, you're twice the feller I figured you was. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>